Complete ranking of the best and worst chest exercises. The gym is full of options when it comes to chest exercises. Even for athletes who are no longer beginners, the variety of available movements can be confusing. After all, what's the real difference between doing bench press with a barbell or with dumbbells? Is the chest fly machine better than with dumbbells? Since nobody has the time or energy to do all existing exercises for a muscle group, we need to be strategic and choose the most effective ones. That's why today you'll see a complete ranking of the most popular chest exercises. We'll classify them into five categories. Excellent, good, average, bad, and horrible. Obviously, we'll also explain why each one is in a certain category. Let's start with one of my personal favorites, the machine chest fly. This exercise deserves its excellent classification for several fundamental reasons. First, it provides exceptional stretching of the chest muscles, which is crucial for maximizing hypertrophy. When you can stretch the muscle well in the eccentric phase, you're creating more efficient micro tears that will result in optimized muscle growth. The big advantage of the machine chest fly compared to other variations is the consistency in the force vector. Unlike what happens with dumbbells, where gravity can decrease tension in certain positions, the machine maintains uniform resistance throughout the entire movement. This means constant muscle activation, without rest points. Remember that guy at the gym who told you that machines are for the weak? Well, he probably never understood biomechanics properly. The stability of the machine allows you to focus exclusively on the contraction of the chest, without needing to waste energy stabilizing the movement as happens with free weights. Result? More fibers being recruited directly in the chest, more progressive overload, and consequently, more gains. Pec deck. This is classified as bad, and for good reasons. Many pec deck models work simultaneously on shoulder abduction and external rotation, a potentially disastrous combination for joint health in the long term. A detail that few pay attention to. Observe the design of the machine. If the movement makes you close your elbow more than your wrist, it's a terrible sign. This mechanic puts disproportionate stress on the glenohumeral joint, drastically increasing the risk of rotator cuff injuries. I've seen so many strong guys being taken down by injuries after years of poorly executed pec deck that it becomes sad. They ask, how did this happen if I never felt pain during the exercise? The answer is simple. Overuse injuries are silent until they're not anymore. And when you realize it, it's already too late. If you still insist on using the pec deck, at least choose modern models that have been redesigned to respect the natural biomechanics of the shoulder. Otherwise, you're playing Russian roulette with your joints. And believe me, it's not worth risking years of progress for a bad exercise. Dips. Dips is one of those exercises that divides opinions. On one hand, it's a powerful compound movement that simultaneously works the chest, triceps, and even the shoulders. On the other hand, its effectiveness for the specific development of the chest leaves something to be desired in some aspects, justifying its classification as average. The main issue here is the working angle. For dips to really emphasize the chest, you need to lean your torso forward and open your elbows more during the movement. Without these technical adjustments, the exercise quickly transforms into predominantly triceps work. Another factor to consider is that many practitioners cannot achieve full range of motion in the movement, especially at the beginning. They do only half the dip, significantly limiting the stimulus to the chest. For those who already master the exercise, it can be a useful tool in the arsenal, especially for working the lower portion of the chest. But honestly, there are more efficient and direct options if chest development is your main goal. Use dips as a complement not as the base of your chest workout. Decline push-up. The decline push-up deserves its classification as a good exercise for several practical reasons. First, it intensifies the work on the lower portion of the chest, an area that many struggle to develop adequately. By elevating your feet, you change the working angle and increase the load on the lower chest. A frequently ignored advantage of the decline push-up is the possibility of progressing without expensive equipment. You can start with your feet at a low height and gradually elevate the position as your strength increases. For more advanced practitioners, adding a chain around your neck or a backpack with weight on your back creates efficient progressive overload. 
Have you noticed how many calisthenics athletes have impressive chests? This is no coincidence. The decline push-up simulates a natural movement pattern that respects the body's biomechanics, resulting in harmonious development and significantly reducing the risk of injuries. The big limitation, of course, is that eventually you'll reach a plateau in overload. Unlike exercises with weights, there is a ceiling to how much you can progress just with body weight. Even so, until you reach that point, the decline push-up provides an excellent stimulus for hypertrophy and strength, especially for the lower part of the chest. Incline Machine Bench Press The Incline Machine Bench Press is one of the treasures of modern bodybuilding, deserving its classification as excellent. Let's be honest, how many people do you know with a really developed upper portion of the chest? Very few, right? And this is not by chance. The upper region of the chest is notoriously difficult to activate and develop, mainly because many traditional exercises cannot create enough tension in this specific area. This is where the incline machine bench press shines. It provides a perfect joint confrontation for this portion, ensuring that the stimulus reaches exactly where it needs to. An often underestimated advantage of this exercise is the possibility of working to failure safely. Without needing a partner to spot you, you can really explore your limits without fear. This means more intense sets and consequently, greater stimulus for hypertrophy. Another crucial point, the modern incline bench press machine usually allows precise positioning adjustments. You can find exactly the angle that best activates your upper chest, customizing the exercise for your unique body structure. Seated machine flat bench press. The seated machine flat bench press falls into the average category because although it has its merits, it also presents significant limitations. For beginners, this exercise is an excellent starting point. It offers stability, safety, and ease of execution, allowing you to learn the movement pattern without risks. The fundamental problem lies in the mechanics of the movement. Although the machine allows a good stretching of the muscle in the eccentric phase, it fails to provide a complete shortening in the concentric phase. It's like stretching an elastic band and releasing it before reaching the maximum point of tension. You lose part of the benefit. Have you noticed how some people spend years doing this exercise and chest development seems to stagnate at a certain point? This biomechanical limitation is often the culprit. The machine simply doesn't allow that powerful final contraction that really stimulates deep muscle growth. That said, the machine bench press still has its place in the training routine. It's perfect for high fatigue days, when coordination may be compromised, or as a complementary exercise after more intense movements. Just don't make it the exclusive base of your chest training, or you'll be limiting your own development potential. Incline Dumbbell Bench Press The Incline Dumbbell Bench Press is a true champion among chest exercises, fully justifying its classification as excellent. One of the biggest advantages of this exercise is the freedom of movement it provides. Unlike the barbell, which forces your hands to stay in fixed positions, Dumbbells allow you to find the perfect angle for your specific joint structure. This personalization of the movement is revolutionary for those who have already faced shoulder discomfort. You can simply slightly rotate your wrists and adjust the trajectory to find the most comfortable and efficient path for your joints. Result? Greater muscle activation with lower risk of injuries. The range of motion provided by dumbbells is another important differential. You can descend more deeply, creating superior stretching in the chest fibers, especially in the upper portion that is so difficult to develop. Have you noticed how many elite bodybuilders prefer dumbbells to barbells in their preparations? It's no coincidence. Load progression may be slower with dumbbells, but muscle development tends to be more complete, symmetrical, and with less joint wear in the long term. Quality over quantity, always. Plate press. Let's be direct. Despite the burning sensation it can provide, this exercise is fundamentally flawed in its basic mechanics. The central problem of the plate press is that it doesn't produce working force against the direction of the chest muscle fiber. To understand this, think about the direction in which your chest fibers run, from the sternum toward the humerus. An efficient exercise needs to create tension along this line. The plate press, however, generates a force perpendicular to this direction, resulting in extremely inefficient activation. It's like trying to cut a tree by rubbing the ax laterally on the trunk instead of striking it perpendicularly. You'll sweat, you'll feel like you're exerting force, 
but the result will be minimal compared to the effort applied. Many fall into the trap of the plate press because they feel a burn in the chest during the exercise. But don't be fooled. This sensation is mainly due to isometric fatigue and doesn't necessarily indicate an efficient stimulus for hypertrophy. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Having constant access to correct and science-based information is what will make you progress with health in the long term in the bodybuilding world. Flat Dumbbell Bench Press The flat dumbbell bench press easily deserves its classification as an excellent exercise for the chest. Practically for the same reasons which make the inclined dumbbell bench press excellent, except of course for the fact that it doesn't work the upper portion of the chest. Another benefit that we didn't comment on with the inclined dumbbell bench press is the implicit unilateral work in the exercise. As each arm needs to stabilize its own dumbbell, muscle imbalances tend to be naturally corrected over time. Barbell Bench Press The barbell bench press, often revered as the king of chest exercises, actually deserves a more modest classification as average. Don't misunderstand me. It is indeed a powerful exercise, but its risks and limitations often outweigh its benefits for the majority of practitioners. The main advantage of the barbell bench press is the possibility of using really heavy loads. This characteristic makes it excellent for developing raw strength in the chest. However, this same quality carries with it a high risk of injury. Even powerlifting athletes, specialists in this movement, suffer frequent injuries. For the average practitioner who trains alone, without refined technique or reliable training partners, the risk multiplies. Load progression presents another significant challenge. Unlike machines or even dumbbells, increasing the weight on the bar often means jumps of two and a half or five pounds, increments that can be excessive for sustainable progression in the long term. This leads many to force inadequate techniques just to accommodate the additional weight. In terms of biomechanical efficiency, the barbell bench press forces your joints to follow a fixed path that may not be ideal for your unique body structure. Compare this with dumbbells or well-designed machines that allow you to adjust the movement to your specific needs, and it becomes clear why we classify the barbell bench press as average. Dumbbell fly, flat, or incline the dumbbell fly, both in the flat and incline versions, unfortunately deserves its classification as bad. The first problem is the risky biomechanics. During the fly, your shoulders are placed in a position of extreme abduction with external rotation, especially at the lowest point of the movement. This position puts enormous stress on the shoulder complex, particularly on the rotator cuff. Another critical problem is the technical execution. The vast majority of practitioners completely lose tension in the chest in the final phase of the movement, when the dumbbells approach each other. They tend to close their elbows too much, transforming the end of the movement into something similar to a bench press, nullifying the purpose of the exercise. The risk-benefit ratio simply doesn't compensate. For the small additional activation that the dumbbell fly provides compared to safer alternatives, the potential price in terms of joint health is too high. There are at least half a dozen exercises that work the chest in a similar or superior manner without putting your shoulders at risk. Push-ups. The traditional push-up deserves its classification as a good exercise for the chest for several solid reasons. One of the biggest advantages of the push-up is its versatility. You can easily modify it to emphasize different portions of the chest. Push-ups also shine in advanced techniques like bisets and post-exhaustion methods. The main limitation, of course, is long-term progression. Once you can comfortably perform 20 to 25 repetitions, the stimulus for hypertrophy begins to decrease significantly. High Pulley Crossover The high pulley crossover is truly an elite exercise for chest development, deserving its classification as excellent. This movement especially shines in working the lower portion of the chest an area that many struggle to develop adequately. The great magic of the crossover is in the resistance curve it provides. Unlike free weights that depend only on gravity, pulleys maintain constant tension in the muscle throughout the entire arc of movement. This means that your chest never rests during the execution, maximizing time under tension, a crucial factor for hypertrophy. Execution flexibility is another strong point. You can easily adjust the angle of the movement, the position of the body, and the amplitude to emphasize different portions of the chest 
or work around specific limitations. Feeling discomfort in the shoulder? Simply slightly modify the trajectory to find the most comfortable path for your joints without sacrificing the effectiveness of the exercise. Pullover. The pullover occupies an interesting position in the arsenal of chest exercises, deserving its classification as good. This unique movement has the peculiar characteristic of simultaneously working the chest and the latissimus dorsi, making it almost a hybrid between exercises for chest and back. For the chest, the pullover mainly works the lower and outer portion, areas that often need additional attention for complete development. The extreme stretching it provides in the eccentric phase creates a differentiated stimulus that few other exercises can replicate. It's that sensation of chest opening that many practitioners describe. However, the fact of dividing the stimulus between chest and back prevents the pullover from being classified as excellent for the chest. It's like trying to serve two masters, effective for both, but not maximized for either. This doesn't diminish its value as a complementary exercise in the training routine, especially for those seeking balanced development of the upper body. Low Pulley Crossover The low pulley crossover enters the excellent category. If you're looking to develop that upper separation of the chest and improve the definition of the clavicular region, few exercises do this as well as this one. The biomechanics of the movement is perfect for activating the upper portion of the chest, a notoriously difficult area to develop. The force vector created by the upward movement directly challenges the upper fibers of the chest, forcing them to work intensely throughout the entire arc of movement. At the same time, you get a significant bonus of activation in the anterior deltoid, creating that harmonious transition between shoulder and chest that characterizes aesthetic physiques. Just like in the high pulley crossover, execution versatility is another strong point. Mid pulley crossover. We finish our analysis with the mid pulley crossover, an exercise that deservedly receives the excellent classification. This movement represents a perfect balance between the benefits of the high and low pulley crossovers, offering comprehensive stimulation for the entire chest. The great advantage of the mid pulley crossover is its ability to hit the chest in its natural axis of contraction. When you perform the movement correctly, the line of force passes exactly in the direction of the muscle fibers, creating a biomechanically perfect stimulus. It's as if the exercise had been specifically designed to respect human anatomy. The feeling of contraction at the maximum point of the movement is incomparable. That moment when you bring your hands together in front of your body and feel the chest completely contracting creates a mind-muscle connection that few other exercises can replicate. If you liked this and also want to see the complete ranking of leg exercises, we have a video appearing right now on the screen where we analyze all the most popular ones. Don't miss checking it out. Thank you for watching up to here and may God bless you, my friend.